I'm Emily. And I'm Hannah. We are best friends and dietitians. We have a goal of challenging nutrition misinformation and fitness trends with an evidence-based approach. Each episode, we will dish up our thoughts about the latest facts on a popular health-related topic. We're the Upbeat Dietitians. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to a brand new episode of the podcast. Hello, everyone. Today we are talking about a very exciting topic. And if you know about our topic, you probably found us, or you, if you know, a rough start. If rough you start. know, a rough, rough start. If you know about our podcast, you definitely know what we're about to talk about. And we're talking about social media today. And we're talking about kind of more of the side of it is if you don't have a great relationship with social media, if you don't feel good while scrolling through social media, if it just gives you bad vibes in general, we're going to talk about that. And our official name, if you've probably seen the title is how to detox your social media, but we're going to kind of go a couple different ways about it. Just talking about why it's good to detox your social media. This might be the only detox we will endorse. I can't really think of any, unless oh. it was like a friendship detox. Like, <laughs> I'm not like, uh, what are you saying? Are you going to detox me? Yes. I'm cutting off everyone. No, I, I don't think I'd have any friends if I <laughs> didn't talk. <laughs> That's not true, but we yeah. do talk every day. <laughs> we do. That's true. That's true. We did a detox episode a few maybe a few months back. Ago. We'll have to link yeah. it. We'll link it below. Um, but we spoiler alert, and that one talked about how you don't need to do any kind of detox, but actually you do. You need to do a social media detox, and this is how to do it. <laughs> yes. We're excited. So let's get into it. Overall. Let's let's pour one out. That's a phrase. <laughs> I've never said that before. Yeah, I've never heard those words come out of your mouth. <laughs> I don't think they'll ever come out again. <laughs> but let's let's pour one out to those fraud detoxes, the lemon juices, the cayenne yeah. mixtures, because they're just they are wannabes and they wanna be our liver, kidney, and lungs. <laughs> I don't know what's gotten into you today. <laughs> I'm once again, whenever we record, I don't have brain power. It's I just, know it's like at the end of the it? day, whenever we record, I wish we could record at like, imagine recording at like 8 a.m. We would be thriving. We would be, a comp- this would be a different podcast. It'd be a much different podcast. <laughs> yeah. It would be the more upbeat diet. Now oh, we're, right now we're like, the beat dietitians we'd be the we really own our upbeat side are you saying that we're frauds is this our scandal last time we talked oh, about yeah. what our scandal would be. the oreo scandal what was your scandal again your avocado, avocado toast, toast. <laughs> no. truth is we're not that upbeat <laughs> <laughs> we're tired and brain dead but okay anyway. i don't know what's going to be either way Let's talk about how the real do- detox that deserves attention is social media detox. And that you can't sell, which probably is why it's not that popular. You know what? Maybe we should sell that. We could totally make an ebook or something. Like a step-by-step, Ooh, yeah. even though we're giving it to you for free right now on this podcast. <laughs> Maybe they didn't find the podcast. You know, yeah. we'll give them the opportunity to find the podcast, but if they don't want to listen to us, then they can pay for something. Okay, good idea. But yeah, it is <laughs> going to be a very good thing to do, whether you're doing it from learning through this free podcast or through our ebook we're going to make, apparently. <laughs> it's very important to do this because like Emily and I always talk about on here, I think we talk about it because we just want to complain because it's exhausting. <laughs> being on social media, there's a lot of cons to it. A lot of pros, you get to like connect with others, make virtual friends, see what your family's doing from across the country or whatever. Um, But unfortunately, I think that's how it was intended to be used, but it's become a lot more than that in a lot of ways. Um, And it can be very detrimental to mental health. And so that is the reason why we're talking about this today. We're all about mental health, as yes. you guys know. 
So let's jump into the cons of social media because I think Hannah already covered the pros. Like you can connect with others. You can connect with people across the world, which is crazy. Like we have some friend, like dietitian friends in Germany, which is absolutely wild. Um, you find people with similar interests or just learn about new people's like hobbies and what they're passionate about through it. But there are cons and we're going to chat about them. So first one being, if not one of the biggest ones, is social media can increase an indiv- individual's risk of disordered eating, depression, and anxiety. They have done studies on this recent generation on their mental health. And one of the biggest contributors to mental disorders is the internet, which makes me sad when like older generations are like, the internet's ruining them. Like, (laughs) maybe in some ways. You're not wrong. (laughs) But also it's helped us a lot as well. It's helped us develop opinions that aren't our parents because they were the main people we talked to. Um, But it's it's a space where like, bullying is always happening and you can never leave it and that's one what that was one of the biggest factors that increased that like mental disorder risk and just the internet's not regulated social media is not really regulated like you can say whatever you want pinterest released the like no more weight loss things even though i still see weight loss i was just gonna say and like we can post we emily and i both post on pinterest like our tiktoks we just throw up there and if you're not a creator, you probably wouldn't know this, but you can like add tags to like get your post seen and we can add weight loss tags. There's oh yeah. So many of them available. Yeah. On TikTok in their community guidelines, you're not allowed to promote anything with eating disorders, but there is a lot of, okay. <laughs> there's okay. a lot of disorder on TikTok. Um, it's like, so who, it's- who's even regulating that? Like, that's the hard part. Yes. And there's so much that yeah. it's not something a robot can easily decipher like there's very tricky ways people can word things that would not get flagged exactly Exactly. so it's not regulated and also it's it never goes away it's just constantly going which also just thinking about that is anxiety inducing like yeah there's never a slow moment really in social media no some every week it's something new it literally it literally is is, like there are rds like us who their whole platform is just like stitching and duetting all the stupid disordered eating content out there like they can make an entire platform based off of just uh what's the word like combating all the negative content out there and they will always be able to do that because there's always going to be new content coming out that promotes disordered eating habits. Yeah. Which leads kind of into our next point here, our next con of social media, which is that we are constantly being exposed kind of along with disordered eating to this like idea that of course, thin bodies are good and big bodies are bad. This is like another just constant, constant thing. I'm talking about it all the time on my page recently. It's just everywhere. Yeah. Especially in the social media world or like the influencer world. Yeah. It's pushed. Hashtag body lot. goals. Yeah. And then like the creators that find success a little bit easier are always have thinner bodies or in thinner bodies. Or they're posting like a weight loss. Um, What's it called? My gosh, this is such an obvious word. Before and after. Oh, like they yeah. Like post before and they were, of course, bigger and then they lost weight and those posts always go viral. But everyone's yeah. like, oh my gosh, I'm so proud of you. You did so good. You're so much prettier now. You know, that whole shtick. Yeah. I think the only before and after weight loss ones I like are where bef- it's like, I always see it with girls because I don't know. I, <laughs> I said, I never really tend to like see men on my feet. <laughs> I don't either. I'm like, this is not for you. <laughs> yeah. You're, um, but I always see it where like girls will talk about like she deserved to be loved and then they show their like before body. Those are the only ones I do like because like, yes, she deserved the same exact amount of love 
and yeah. compliments and whatever you're receiving now. Yeah. Which and unfortunately, those people had experienced that difference. They're like, wow, people like me a lot more now that I'm thin. Exactly. And that's where I want to say like, ugh, before some troll is like, you're so anti-weight loss. We're not anti-weight loss. We're just anti what comes along with that. The other side of it, when you have not lost the weight yet. Um, yeah. People weight are treated stigma, terribly. Phobia, yeah. all of that. Weight loss is not inherently a bad thing, but it's also not inherently a good thing either. No. Mm. Which that's not what people want to hear because we're not just pushing people to make themselves as tiny as possible yeah. and shaming people. Yeah. But anywho, that's a sensitive topic to me right now. <laughs> mm. um, let's talk about the next con. So if you're someone that only follows people that like have a, that meet that very narrow definition of beauty or the beauty standard, this will absolutely affect your body image and can hinder your actions or your efforts toward body acceptance. Because that's all you're being exposed to. That's all you know. That's kind of like, this is the norm. This is what I should look like. When that's not the case, there isn't an ideal body shape. And only seeing one type will make it a little bit harder to maybe accept your body if you look a little bit different than whatever you're following on your feed. Yeah. Diversity is important. I'd say it applies to like race too. Like if you're yeah. only following what you define as beauty as just a blonde white girl, that's all you're going to think of as pretty, yeah. beautiful, whatever. But there's there's way more than just blonde <laughs> white girls out there. There are. There are. <laughs> yeah. Diversity all around will be good yeah. for your feet. Yeah. Um, next one we've discussed before on here many of times we've even done an entire podcast episode where we reacted to these trolls, but trolls are the next con, which I guess I was, I was going to say that it will only really happen if you are someone like us, who's like intentionally putting content out there. Um, but like you could literally post anything and trolls will come after you, even if you're not like having a I... purpose for you in social media. No, I actually... Someone we both know, they started a social media account where they are like pursuing sewing on the side and they like posted a couple other pieces just to share and like they wouldn't, not to say that like only people with like really big followings get hate comments because I've seen hate comments everywhere. Yeah. Um, But like there were nasty comments and I was like, literally wh- why like why did why? you why are you hating on this person sewing like passion and what they created and it just goes to show like literally like we kind of go after them sometimes like sometimes we like to stir the pot a little bit but there's sometimes people are just sharing what they like and they're yeah. gonna be trolls and haters and that's unfortunately how the world works yeah. And they're never, they're not going to go away. There's, you're not going to please everyone. And there's always going to be someone who's upset. Yeah. And I guess even if you're not posting content to receive comments, I think even like scrolling through TikTok and reading all the hate comments, that can't be good for your health, mental health either. No. Like just seeing them, even if it's not towards you, I'm sure it's still not going to be great for our brains. Yeah, there's definitely a mob mentality with it because like once one person starts being mean, then everyone starts being mean. And, Gosh, yeah. it's crazy out there. People have too much time in their hands. I know. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't want to put myself on like on this high pedestal or whatever, but like I have never left a comment like that, and I have no desire to. I don't get where that comes from. I think the closest I've left to a hate comment was someone was saying that we're controlled by the academy and i commented like 
They're actually not our governing body. If you like, look this up. That was the clo- that was the meanest thing. Ooh, I I'm, I'm really like, coming after them. <laughs> no, but like, I don't know. It's just a projection of people's like insecurities and yeah. like their own. They're being miserable. Like they're miserable their own lives. It's crazy. But the time they have when exactly. it's not just like one comment. It's great. Remember that person? I know you've had it too. That person on my page that was on there for 24 hours <laughs> commenting. And it went viral, of course, because TikTok was like, hell yeah. <laughs> this video Keep it coming. So much. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you, is that only, like you sit on your phone and you're like, that's so boring. Get a hobby, yeah. a different hobby. <laughs> yeah. And it's always the ones that have like, no profile picture. Oh yeah, and they private follow, account. They have two followers. Yeah, and they. I was talking to Bobby the other day, and I'm like, these people should be glad I'm not more vengeful than I am because <laughs> digital footprints exist. Yeah, and it's very easy. You, you may think you don't have anything connected to it. Oh, you do. They're. It's very easy to find if you know how to find it, but like, I'm sure they don't think about it. Have you been seeing Drew's posts on TikTok where she like <laughs> goes to the commenters like page and like posts a picture of her or a video of them? I've been living for it. So uh, <laughs> I'm like, where does this audacity come from? Right. She I gets it bad. She, oh yeah. She gets it bad. I... And something I fail to like remember until it's happening to me <laughs> is they get notifications for all the like inter conversations that happen. I'm like, cause you're used to just looking through the comment section. You just see the top ones. You yeah. aren't seeing at what's at the bottom or what's the happening in the arguments. Yeah. So I don't even want to know when she Post the DM she gets. I'm like, oh my God. how do people think this is okay? Or like pepperoni muffin shares her comments too. Hers are also insane. Yeah. And I'm like, you can, if you really don't like someone, you can block them. Oh or yeah. Follow them. Like there are people I just don't like. I block them. Exactly. Like influencers that have millions of followers that everyone else likes. I just don't for whatever reason, but I'm not like on their page posting hate comments. I just no. block them. So or I don't see their stuff. DMing them racial slurs. Or right. <laughs> oh my gosh. But it's okay. We trolls don't listen to our podcast. So like you guys already. <laughs> That's true. No, <laughs> we're not preaching to those who need to hear it right now (laughs) hopefully if you guys have ever gotten a hate comment you block them or you know it's coming from someone who's just sad about their life and taking it out on others yeah it's not about you no next thing to note with social media is it's a highlight reel and people only show you what they want to see and this case in point i know we So we're done talking about him, but Liver King (laughs) purposely did not post his, what steroids he's taking every morning or whatever. I don't even know how often you take steroids. Every morning. I have no idea. Steroid hall. (laughs) (laughs) He should embrace this. This could become his new brand. Right? Make it his brand. Yeah. He should like, let's normalize steroids and their side effects. (laughs) Um, But people choose what they post. You only see what they want you to see. Even when they post that vulnerable video or that vulnerable picture where they're crying or something happened, they wanted you to see that at the end of the day. They didn't accidentally stop. Oops, I Oh, I, I tripped and it. fell and hit post and added the filter while I, I was like, falling down. Hit record and post and put up my ring light and <laughs> like made the angle look good. No. They are intentionally showing you that. And it might be to show you like more of that vulnerable side, which yeah. we do appreciate. But they choose what you see. They aren't going to show you things they don't want you to see. And that's something we tend to forget when we're following people we really like, especially people who just post about their lives. So you feel like you know everything, but you're probably only seeing one or two hours 
of their life a week or so. Yeah. Yeah. Like even those who are constantly, seemingly constantly on there, there's no way you're seeing every single thing. That's just not realistic unless they have like a live feed camera on them 24 <laughs> seven. That That'd be terrible. <laughs> That sounds like something in Black Mirror. Let's. I don't know what that is. What nope. is Black Mirror? It's a TV. Okay, you wouldn't like it. It's no. a TV show. That's not happy. <laughs> not Say, happy. No <laughs> Wait, Say no more. Wait, but it has a lot of like the purpose of it is to make you like question things about our society. So like that's really thought provoking. But it's I would not say it's a happy show. Um, There's a lot of. Stuff. This would surprise our listeners that know this part of me, but not you. Um, I'm watching the House of Dragons series <gasps> right now. Oh my gosh. How Which, far are you? Episode five. We just finished. I think you're farther than I am. Oh, really? Bobby and I haven't seen past the first time jump. Because oh, we're... Okay. Well, I won't yeah. tell you what I just... I won't tell anyone, I guess, because it's a big <laughs> spoiler what I just watched. Because that show's always got big things happening you can't talk about, really. Yeah, because I didn't realize. Are you it. liking it? Yes, compared to Game of Thrones, I don't know if I can compare them. They're just different. I don't know. I like them both, but yeah. I think that would be surprising to listeners who think that I just want happy shows. It's the only show I watch that's not happy. That's true. Game of Thrones and House of Dragon are not happy. No, shows. I just watched like eight people die in this episode, and like yeah. there's blood everywhere, and like yeah, people cheating it's on each other. It's, yeah, not great. Classic, classic. classic. Game of Game Thrones. Thrones, House of Dragon things. Incest, you know, the whole yeah. thing. The, yeah. Well, it wouldn't be Game of Thrones or House of Dragons without incest, apparently. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I want to tell you that. And I guess now you guys get to know too. I'm on exciting. episode five. Okay. I wonder I'll when they'll to do watch season it. two. Yeah, you need to watch it so we can talk about it. Okay. I don't know when season... I know they were confirmed for season two after like just a couple episodes because of how popular it was. I don't know much about the books. Are there going to be other like spinoffs? There's been the books, talk right? of them. There's been talk of a lot of spinoffs, but I don't know if any are actually in the works. Mm. I guess they should focus on one at a time. <laughs> I'm sure it's a lot to produce a show like that. Yeah. I always think about that. I don't know if anyone else does, but like when I watch anything really, I have to like, I don't know what it is about me. I'm always thinking about like how they got the angle and like what props they had to like yeah. get to like do that. I don't that. think anyone's thinking. Well, I, I wouldn't say anyone. Stuff. I would say the majority of people. I don't think. <laughs> and I always like put myself in the shoes of like the crew. So like what jobs everyone's doing and like what they did that week to like prepare for that episode. Like I'm always thinking about that kind of stuff. I <laughs> maybe not, you have a different calling maybe you should be a producer I think I would love or, that I get to like organize stuff and like it's always new because I get so bored mm-hmm. which is what happens in my own business is like I create something and then I'm like okay that was fun now what and yeah. so like I've created multiple like ebooks and courses that have just like not gone anywhere because I create it and then I'm just like eh, what's next yeah I don't want to like do the same thing forever so I think you're right I feel like we, we've already hit our therapy part of the episode. I know. <laughs> this normally What's happens at the brought? end. I know. <laughs> Game of Thrones brought it in. Yeah, I'm always thinking like, what? what's everyone doing behind the scenes in this episode? And like how you like hair... love the behind the scenes then of like any absolutely and like the bloopers like all that kind of stuff where like it's that not makes just sense why you like the office ladies podcast so much uh-huh uh-huh they just like break down the entire episode and like what every person's job was that week yeah it's so fascinating <laughs> oh man there was on... they're not showing that po- social media or the show none of that exactly good good segue back to our i was gonna outline. say sorry you're gonna say something <laughs> i wasn't I can segues back nothing like, worthwhile back, let's back move out. on let's move on okay. <laughs> okay our last well our last con i'm sure there's dozens more um our last con though for today's purposes is that social media can create fomo or generate fomo which I was going to say I don't experience because I just want to be home by myself with my dog and Ross. But I will say 
if it helps someone else relate to this, I actually do experience it, but I experience it more so in like, like a business standpoint for me personally, like if someone in dietetics is like thriving in their business, I'll experience FOMO that way. So it may not be about like experiences or like this person's on a really cool trip to Aruba. Um, but like other aspects of people's lives that you follow, you might feel like jealous of, and even like their body and like they have, maybe someone has like a really great relationship with food that you wish you had. Um, that kind of FOMO could be something that could be worsened as well by social media. That comparison side of it. Exactly. So whatever it is, like may not even really be FOMO, I guess, but the comparisonitis for sure is a big thing. Yeah. So let's talk about how to start your detox. Step one, go and log into your social media platforms, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, YouTube, be real. We'll throw in there too. Snapchat, Twitter, Tumblr. Oh my God. MySpace. MySpace has been around. (laughs) Well, if I ever download Snapchat, I want you to just like come to my house and punch me in the face. (sighs) You know how I re-downloaded it, right? Yeah. What's the update now? What's your Snapchat journey? (laughs) The notifications have been off for years. Okay. Um, But I have like one or two friend groups that use it. And that's the only reason why I have it. But much better compared to where, when we first met our Snapchat journeys were at. That was was so weird. That was like 2015, 2016 I was embarrassed by my Snap score. I remember I like compared it to you and Maddie and a couple other people. And they're like, Emily, why is your score so high? And I'm like, this is how people communicate. That is not how I communicated. Absolutely not. I deleting the snapchat for that time was one of the best decisions my entire life (laughs) (laughs) i don't even know what it's used for anymore to be honest is it the same thing i think so it's it's dying good much so i know i don't ever look at the ad section but like when i look at it it like nothing ever makes sense it's like weird click baby stuff that i'm just like i don't have any interest in seeing this but yeah it's I, don't, I think it's I think it's just much more popular with like high school and younger I saw someone post it like you're above the age of like 22 or like 23 <laughs> and someone asks you for your snapchat like walk the other direction oh I'd literally be like how old are you absolutely not you're a child that'd be illegal <laughs> I can't speak to someone who's younger than me. (laughs) Um, I was telling Ross the other day, I was like, imagine if we had to like date in this day and age, how terrible that would be. I talk to Bobby about this all the time because I think I'm allowed to say this. I don't think I, I, I'm going to read the rules of this before, before we release this. But in that Facebook group I joined, Oh no, I can, I can say I'm in it. Okay. We're okay. We're okay. I'm not going to get, ki- I really don't want to get kicked out of this group. I'm so in, <laughs> I'm in a, a Facebook group called, are we dating the same guy? Chicago edition. And I have been reading the stories. It's mostly like Tinder and hinge stories. And I don't think I'd survive. No, I, I would could- just be single forever. And there are some where like the comments are nice and they're like, oh yeah, I went out with him. He's really nice. And I've seen some of like, oh yeah, I'm also getting coffee with him. And I, I, I just know that would mess me up knowing (laughs) like they're not exclusive. Not that like, uh, that's normal apparently now where you can just saying whatever, but that's not my vibe at all. I am very self-aware of how jealous of a person I am <laughs> and how insecure when it comes to dating I am. Oh. We would not last. No. You would fall in love with people within like two days. Exactly. And, and they I would have like six girlfriends. Yeah. And I like overthink and get incredibly <laughs> jealous. <laughs> oh, 
it's a good thing we're not looking for that <laughs> no thank god <laughs> i hope i never have to do that ever again not that it was that hard for me because i met ross like a billion years ago but and at taco bell at taco bell we were <laughs> just folding burritos <laughs> stuff and tacos that yeah. is not that did not sound right no we'll stick with the burritos <laughs> but yeah i don't even know how we got here Oh yeah, the dating pool, the dating world sounds terrible. Like oh, because Snapchat. If some oh yes guy asked for my Snapchat, mm-mm. no, no, no. I feel like I'm. I can't talk to you. This is this is against the law. <laughs> I I don't. Are you twelve? How old I am? <laughs> Ugh. but let's talk about the detox because we're getting sidetracked okay yeah so the first step like emily <laughs> said is to just go to the platform so there are some that we think are more toxic than others but just go through the ones that you use the most that you feel are leading to all those cons that we already talked about and then step two you're gonna go to your profile and go to your following list so who you follow you're gonna go through each person like each person that you follow, ask yourself, why do I follow them? What are they doing for me? Are they bringing me joy? Or is it more, I'm like comparing myself to them. Do I feel neutral about them? If that's the case, I guess even then you could leave it or just get rid of them on Instagram. They have like a mute function where you can like not unfollow them, but just like mute them. So you don't see their stuff. Like if it is like a friend from high school that you don't want to unfollow, but you don't really want to see their 15 stories a day. Yeah. Mute function is very nice. Yeah. And then once you've done a little bit of reflection of what type of emotions am I feeling about this person? If there's any type of feelings of like jealousy, feeling insecure, inadequate, unfollow them. Like even a little bit. Even like they won't take it personally, even though I definitely know and can (laughs) speak from experience. um, Those silly like Instagram follower tracking apps. Oh my God. I used to have that. I would take that so personally if someone had followed, but like they're going to be upset for two seconds and then they're going to move on. (laughs) (laughs) And if it's like an influencer with millions of followers, they're not going to care. I don't want to break it to you, but they don't know who you are. (laughs) No, unless you are commenting every single second of the day, That's then true. they if might. It's like then a, they like might. An OG follower. Like I have a few that I don't know personally, but I know they're my. You followers. recognize their names. Yeah. yeah, I'd be sad if yeah. they followed me. That's true. Yeah, but they'll move on. Yeah. So unfollow them. You don't have to. Like, there's no purpose in following accounts that don't make you feel good about yourself. Right. And it doesn't include just influencers or other people. It could be like brands. It could be just certain types of things you see on your feeds. You can like say not interested. And it doesn't even be people you follow. It could also be like on TikTok, you can block oh, people. Yeah. You can just just block them. Like, or like you're if like, I see like a type of video I don't like. Like if someone posts like a what I eat in the day that is very problematic, I'll just put not interested. So I don't get any of those anymore. Yeah. It doesn't have to be as intense as an unfollow or a block. It could be not interested. So some other good questions related to food we can think about with the content we're seeing on our social media is we can think about, does this account make us feel bad about your life or your body? If it does unfollow or don't, not interested. Does the account try to motivate you to change something about the way you look that includes weight loss and pushes the idea that weight loss is better? Might not be good for your mental health. Might be a good idea to do not interested or mute or block or unfollow. Does it promote restricting the foods that you eat? And this one, I always like to look at who's saying it. And then I think about what is their purpose here? Is it food fear mongering? How are they going about educating it? But if they're just like, don't eat this, it's toxic. 
and poisonous. Probably not going to be a great account. And honestly, anyone who speaks like that, I don't know how credible they are. Might be good for screw for unfollowing. Next one to think about is, does it compare or scrutinize bodies with side-by-side comparison posts? Does it perpetuate like any type of ideas of once again, like judging people's bodies, body checking, anything like that, that there's just that hyper-awareness around bodies and whatnot might not be great from a body image standpoint, body acceptance standpoint. And then does it promote exercise as a means to change your body rather than focusing on how it feels or other health benefits? If they just push it for like changing your body might not be a great account. Why do you want to hit that? Not interested. And then does it fail to represent individuals of different shapes, ages, and ethnicities? And this is one of my favorite ones because if you get so tunneled into one thing, not only does it make your mind a lot more narrow-minded about make your mind more (laughs) narrow-minded make your vision or perception of the world a little bit more narrow-minded there we go and you're like oh this is what everyone looks like and this is what everyone should look like well you're in you're only setting yourself up for failure because i'm not i was about to say unfortunately fortunately (laughs) we live in a world with all different types of people, what they look like, their ages, their ethnicities. And that's what is exciting because if we all look the same, that'd be weird. And we'd all be, Oh my God, that'd be so weird. Like I'd be kind of afraid. And like twins are really cool, but like, imagine if like everyone looked exactly. Imagine an entire world of like two different looking people. How'd that work? Like, how would you like base like attraction? Like speaking of dating, like, would that even be a thing? Would people have to start saying? caring about personalities? Right. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. That matters. That'd be yeah. weird. That'd so, yeah, be scary. It's cool that we have different shapes and colors and what else do humans have to offer? Personalities, and I guess. Age. Personalities. Age. Ages. Gender. It's fun. It makes it way more interesting. Like, yeah. There isn't one, a one size fit all to the beauty standard. So yeah. we should make sure that our feed doesn't reflect that as well. Exactly. So now that you've detoxed, your feed probably is blank or your following is probably blank. If you you're at zero, <laughs> hopefully you were not at zero. No. Hopefully you're not because you had already done some of these things. Hopefully Um, our podcast is still in your following. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Um, But now it's time to replenish if you would like to. Um, We'll include in the show notes some of our favorite people to follow. Um, We won't really like rattle those off here, but it's time to fill with more positive feed or more positive accounts, uh, bonus points if they discuss intuitive eating or health at every size, if it is a different... Um, if it's adding diversity to what you usually would follow, um, in terms of like body size, ethnicity, whatever, um, those are the ones that you want to spice it up with. Yeah. So overall social media can be a really great opportunity to connect with people, connect with people around the world, with friends, family, learn new information, but also unfortunately it can be a scary place full of a lot of not so healthy, healthy quote, (laughs) not so great, um, nutrition information, and it's not that well regulated. So great news is you can control a lot of what you see to a point Yeah, with those not interested buttons, those blocking buttons, those unfollowing buttons and those following buttons, because we want to give some people some love who are trying to advocate for good vibes and diversity, good vibes and diversity. That's, that's, Oh my God. That should be our tagline. That is, I'm all about that. (laughs) That is, that's our new, we don't have a slogan. Let's make it good Good vibes and diversity. (laughs) That's where you're for. 
<laughs> I want a t-shirt that says that. That's great. Yeah. But yes, I second all of that. You can, to a degree, curate a feed that is not so toxic. And there's a lot of tools, thankfully, on these platforms to help you do so. Okay. The bonus question, I want to explain it because it's kind of confusing the way I worded it. I was not quite sure if you'd know what I mean by this, but it goes back to our whole Snapchat thing. So uh, the bonus question is, what does your preferred social media platform say about you? And so what I want to do is go through like the big ones, talk about like, if you're a big Snapchat junkie, what does that say about you? We're going to do some like personality trait thing. Yeah. So like imagine like that 17 magazine when you were younger, a little like flow it would do. Okay. So let's do Snapchat first since we've been talking about it. If you prefer Snapchat, it's like, if you go to your like iPhone settings or whatever, it's the one that you spend the most time on according to your phone settings or whatever. Who are you? Like, what's your deal if Snapchat is your number one thing? Yeah. If you are a Snapchatter, if Snapchat is your preferred social media of choice, you are a 15 year old. I was going to say 13. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and you live with your parents. And you go to school eight hours a day. <laughs> Rough. And you enjoy the emojis next to mm. people's names. And but you also uh, get really upset and hung up on when your best friend emoji changes. And there might be some need for development in the connections. It or appreciating the connections you can make but you love to take pictures and you love to share that experience with your friends but also sometimes you struggle to know how to communicate I like it I was gonna add like a a visual like an aesthetic I think you wear low-rise jeans (laughs) the baggy ones which no hate I want to pull those off I just can't I'm a millennial um, low rise jeans, one of those, like, like right up to your boobs, kind of crop top, like the tight long sleeve. Yeah. Um, you got like the really chunky new balance sneakers, which I just got some new balances for Christmas from Ross. I love them. They're not like the dad Ooh. ones though. They're like, okay, I'll just show you a picture. They're very cute in my opinion. But anyway, you were like the big, like dad, like mowing new balances. <laughs> mowing ones. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, which looks super cute on you because you're 13. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that's how I would describe them. How they, I'm going to do how they dress, I guess. In each of these, okay. apparently it's going to be, my okay. Thing. I'll do personality. You can do how they dress. Okay. Should we do Instagram now? <laughs> I was going to say, and if you're a guy, you probably oh. are 30 years old and have never been in a serious relationship. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Only half kidding. <laughs> Let's do. Wait, which one do you say? Instagram. Instagram. If you, Instagram is your preferred, I have beef with Instagram. Oof, so you guys know if Instagram at this point in 2022, after what Instagram has put us all through, <laughs> is your preferred social media, you think you're too good for TikTok. Yes. Because you want real Instagram reels day in and day out, but you refuse to download that Chinese app. I mean, you're better than everyone. <laughs> I forgot about that whole scandal or so. like literally like the American government does not have our information already. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do we not remember the Facebook scandal? Like they they have your information. It oh just God. matter what which country has it. I mean, that was me. I was scared to download it because I was like, I'm going to get murdered by someone, apparently. <laughs> and my identity stolen. Yeah. But yeah. anyhow, if Instagram's your preferred choice, you love Instagram reels. You think they're the funniest thing in the world. Um, you're probably, no, I'm not going to be a hater. I am going to be a hater, actually. <laughs> I'm a hater to my core. Um, you're probably watching things and hearing like the corn song right now. And maybe you're watching if it's a bones or no bones day. Oh. 
Did you see I, that? I, he died. He d- Yeah. Why am I just now finding out about this? I know. I saw. Wait, how old was he? Is it my for you page? He was old. He was an old little guy. Oh my god! I know the the owner of the my for you page. I didn't even follow them, and I saw the news. Yeah, I know. Oh my god! Well, if you're on Instagram, you'll be hearing about this in six months. <laughs> yes. Um, you probably. I was going to say you probably love photo dumps, but if you like photo dumps, you're probably on Visco. You're not on Instagram. I don't really know what Visco is. I mean, I know what it is. It's like a, I, don't I think it's just, is. it's like a aesthetic photo app. I think the Visco and Snapchat people are friends. I can see that. Yeah. They like hang out yeah. on the weekends. Yeah. Yeah. Instagram though, if, if Instagram's your preferred, I just don't have words for you i'm trying to think of like something you're really loyal i'll say that you're that's a very, true you're a very loyal person good for you despite all the changes they instagram put you through you stuck to them and you yeah. are a good friend yeah <laughs> and a good significant other because you'll stick with someone even if they change for the worse which could be not good <laughs> <laughs> yeah i agree um i need to preface mine by saying that what someone chooses to wear is always their choice i'm wearing a goodwill sweater i got like five years ago that was from goodwill so it's probably like 30 years old so you get to pick what you wear of course but the instagram lover is wearing american eagle skinny jeans those like black combat boots that we all had in like high school well, when we were in high school or maybe like, um, like some Jesus sandals, but like the ones that are like way out of date. Yeah. Um, like the braided, the braided ones or old Navy flip flops. Yeah. Um, probably wearing like a t-shirt and a cardigan over it. Ooh, maybe some Ugg boots, but Uggs are coming back. Apparently Uggs are the, the short Uggs are. Yeah. The mini ones, not mm-hmm. the remember the sparkly ones, the sequin ones. Oh man, those were so cool. Like, if you had those in like 2012, you were cool. You, you were a cool kid. You were cool and you were loaded. <laughs> Good for you and your family. Because your parents were willing to spend that money <laughs> on a, the ugliest shoes in the world. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So funny. I still have my Uggs from high school. Which I think I ripped mine. Shows how sturdy they are. You are. Oh, yeah. I was going to say you are loyal. <laughs> are you an Instagram lover? <laughs> I am not an Instagram lover. I mean, I use Instagram, obviously, but I would not say it's my preferred. No. I feel like we're going to just describe ourselves when we do what? You think TikToks? Well, I guess you're a Pinterest. TikTok is not my preferred. I was going to say YouTube. Oh, I love I YouTube. That. But I also really like Pinterest. I don't know what mine is. I kind of hate all of them. (laughs) I mean, fair. Like, that's okay. I think I use Instagram the most. Yeah. But I don't identify with any of the things that we are describing. No. And that's okay. It shows you can get along with things that don't, aren't similar to you. Yes. That's the Enneagram Things that aren't similar. (laughs) Okay, we might to speed this up. We're going quite slow. I know. I we could, know we don't have to do gonna, all of them. Let's just let's do, do TikTok and, and let's do YouTube. Okay. And we'll throw in an honorable mention for Pinterest. Agreed. And an honorable mention for Twitter because I have things to say about Twitter. Okay. Let's do Facebook. If you're Facebook, you're pro- if your preferred choice is Facebook, you're probably 75 years old. Honestly, 40 That's- plus. Like, 40 plus you're right you're right who am i to and we're not calling that old we're not far from that at this no point. we are oh my but we're like closer i move clo- fast we're closer to 40 hold on this math made made sense in my head and it's not it's not making sense hold on i'm taking that back <laughs> i was about to say something very dumb i mean we're closer to 30 than we are when we graduated high school 20 wow we're old 
Yeah. This is this is it. So anyway, <laughs> if you're 40 plus and Facebook's your preferred social media, you you're probably old, but it's respective. <laughs> you probably post about any little okay, but honestly, I feel like people on Facebook were just experiencing what we experienced on Facebook when it first came out. Like we were posting every single stupid thought we had on there and like posting like random pictures and like not like it was more fun back then. Now it's it was. now maybe it's just like our age group. Now it's just like life events and people complaining about things. Right. Who's having a baby? What president do you not like? Who got married? Who had a bridal shower? That's, That's all it literally is. it. That's literally it. But you know, you're probably over forty. What is? What are they wearing? I think <laughs> it honestly might be very similar to the Instagram outfits. I, I was thinking maybe the like you know that print that everyone hates. <laughs> Which one? Like the one like. They put it on like candles and it says like cat mom or like Ew. need more wine. Ew. Like runs for live runs laugh for, love. They have that yeah, in their like home. that. That yes. is on their shirt. Oh my God. Yes, you're right. You're right. They wear a lot of teal. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> teal and orange. Yeah. Are you like the chevron? That pattern big chunky yeah. necklaces yeah i feel like we're just going after women we are not misogynistic by the way i uh, if we were describing men i'd be much meaner yeah i just don't know what kind i don't know about men <laughs> i know they all wear the same things i know and i mean that as an insult <laughs> the only men i t- i work in a field of mostly women yeah i have i think like Ross, my dad, and Ross's dad are the only men that I communicate with on a regular basis. I feel like your dad's kind of fashionable. He wears these jeans. We call that he's listening to us right now. So hi, dad. I love you. <laughs> he wears these jeans that we call TJs, which stands for his teen jeans. <laughs> yeah. They're think like buckle. I know you know what buckle is. I do like buckle. Think like those like really cowboyish, like oh, <laughs> like the equivalent of like the the women's like sequin sparkly ones for men. Like they're just oh, I don't I don't I'll find a picture and show you. Okay, Dad, send me a picture of your TJs so I can show Emily <laughs> and share it with the world. <laughs> Please, yeah, he has good fashion. My mom always like talks about how she has to get his clothes though because like he won't mm-hmm. buy his own clothes yeah which that's how I am like I love the idea of cute clothes but I don't ever spend money on them Mm. hence the Goodwill sweater that's probably 30 years old yeah anyway anyway let's Instagram if you're if your preferred source okay if you're a guy and your preferred social media is Instagram, you probably only follow models. I was just going to say that. Instagram influencers. You're the one who's DMing pepperoni muffin, those weird. Yeah. Leave weird, her alone. Yeah. You weirdo. <laughs> I don't know what you wear. Probably cargo shorts. It's funny. Probably. Or, and this is Ross, over- but sport shorts and t shirt. I feel like they all wear literally like every I don't know single- what guys wear. I don't know. Ross literally has the same outfit on different colors I, every single day. I don't know. This is about to be a very big generalization. <clears throat> but in my experience on social media, I don't know if I've ever seen like non-t-shirt wearing men insult people on the internet. Non-t-shirt so you're saying the t-shirt wears are the ones who insult people? Yeah. yeah. That it's always like the most bland outfit I've ever seen. <laughs> like I'm like, wow. I wore that when I was 11. Yeah. No, I didn't. We were fashionable back then. We thought we were. Yeah. 
with our moccasins and skinny ooh, jeans. I was going to say I have another one for the Instagrammer. Um, actually, but I don't know. I think there's two kinds of Instagrammers. There's like the really chuggy millennial who's doing like the skinny jeans and the the booties and all of that. Did you see someone made a post that only mo- it's chuggy to, to say, say chuggy. I know. I am old. I was- <laughs> I, I I'm part that. of that. <laughs> but it's either them or it's the like the over the top like Instagram model types. I I agree. So it's like, like one of the they, two. and they stuck to photos and they're doing well. Yeah, because they're hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they're the ones Good doing for- like the which I want to pair the like yoga pants that are in right now, the flare ones. Oh, quarter zip from Lululemon. Yeah, yeah uh claw clip all that yeah yeah so i go back on that we this could be a whole episode i don't know if we should do like a part two of this one next week (laughs) we let's do that come back next time to find out what youtube tiktok and twitter and And pinterest Pinterest are yeah well yeah because we've been we have lots to say apparently (laughs) (laughs) okay any whom detox your social media take care of yourself hit that unfollow button hit that block button it's rejuvenating it really is it feels 10 good. out of 10 would recommend and like nope i'll save it we're done we always do this <laughs> we're done all right well we'll catch you next time tune in next week to find out <laughs> What our what your social media preferred preference says about me? Oh my god! <laughs> All right, let's end this. Let's end this. Okay. Bye, guys. Thanks for coming. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in on this episode of the Upbeat Dietitians with your hosts Emily Krause and Hannah Thompson. We appreciate you all so much for continuing to support us. In order to support us and sustain the success of this podcast, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. If you'd like to provide us feedback for future episodes and guest stars, follow us on Instagram at The Upbeat Dietitians. Lastly, you can show us support by providing a monthly donation using the link at the end of our bio. Once again, thank you so much for listening today and stay tuned next Wednesday for a new episode. Until then, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your week.